Okay, we found so today we're going to be doing a bit of a history on the changes from the Kirby from the Heritage 1 right through to the Legend 2. So what we'll do is we'll get straight to it. Kirby fans, welcome back to the channel. Again, those who are new to the channel, if you're getting value out of this content and you haven't already, then contemplate slapping that subscribe button to support the channel, ding that bell for notifications, give us a big thumbs up, and comment down below. I will reply to the comment, and if you like what you comment, I'll pin it to the video. Right, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three Kirby's that I got over the past couple of months, and obviously the changes through time that Kirby expanded them. This is a video that I wanted to make for a while, Okay, so before I start, we're literally 85 subscribers away from that next question going up at 900 subscribers. So if we can get to that by the weekend, that would be absolutely awesome. Um, and I can get that next question up and get five more people into that competition draw. All right, so what we'll do, we carry on with this. So what we'll do is we'll get straight to it. All right, so first up, we're going to start by bringing up the Heritage 84. Now this was the this came out in 1984 and it was a newer version of the Heritage. Before this we had the Heritage 1 and before that we had the Tradition. The Tradition was run from 1979 to 1981. Now the Tradition was the first one to have the paper bags introduced. I haven't got a Tradition so I can't actually show you one of those. Um, but the paper bags were introduced back then. Prior to that they were all shakeout bags. The shakeout bag was still available but the paper bags were there as well but the shakeout bag became sort of optional so you could have shakeout bags or you could have the new paper bags that Kirby had introduced. And then I may moved on to the Heritage 1. Heritage 1 ran from 1981 to 1984 and then obviously in 1984 they brought out the Heritage 84. Now as you can see from this the head's a lot bigger so this is one of the first Heritage 84s actually released and it carried over the big head purely from the Heritage 1. When you take the actual head off, it's not that big actually, it's the same size, you take it off, it's the same size as your normal Kirby's, your Legends and things like that, you just have this extra bit here, these wings, so I'll just put that back on. Now also, with this hat being available, you could have a shakeout bag, as I said, and it came with a paper bag. Now I've updated this and I've gave it a HEPA filtration bag purely so I can actually use it. And I will put a link in the description above to a video that I shared on it with using the HEPA filtration bag. But you can check that out at the end of, end of the video anyway. Now this was the last Kirby to have this style mini emptier. Now I thought it was quite cool because to empty this, you could literally flick the sleeve that up, slide that out like a swing, so slide that over, and that you could pick up and empty all your little bits that were inside. That was quite cool. It's a little bit dusty because obviously I've been using it um, every now and again. Oh, nearly tipped it over. And then you'd lock that back out. Now, what this actually came with, it didn't come with a caddy. I mean, it was one of the last Kirby's that didn't have a caddy. It came with a load of tools and they used to come in like a cardboard box sort of display. I'm hoping I can find a picture and what I'll do is I'll try and put one above on this video um, so hopefully there's one up there as I've edited this video. But it did come with the same tools as what came with the following Kirby. Now after this Kirby came the Heritage 2. So I'll just quickly switch to that. So this is the Heritage 2 on my right. Now as you can see the Heritage 2 has got a smaller head. Now this was carried over from Heritage 84 because this is one of the first ones so that's why you've got a big head. But they upgraded the head and gave it a smaller head. Also, what you'll notice is the mini emptier, I mean, this actually comes off. Let's actually show you. It's a bit stiff, because it's barely used, barely used. But there's the boot, and again, I'll quickly show you how it opens. So if you wanted to empty it, you just flip that across, empty it, and then put it back, and lock it over. Now let's put it back on, so it's just slide. Now you'll notice there's no safety switches on these back parts of the Kirby and this was something that was addressed later on in the Kirby Generations. What I'll do, I'll just turn this around so you can see the tow touch control as well. So the tow touch control stayed the same on both models. 
So the pedal got a little bit bigger on the Heritage 2 compared to the smaller version that was on the Heritage 84. We also had the Micro Magic symbol on there because, because Kirby then actually released the Micro Magic bags with the Heritage 2, um, which was a different bag to the previous ones that were actually used from the 1970s up until the Heritage 84. Now the Heritage 2 was the first Kirby to come with an actual caddy. And what Kirby did, and I'm missing a couple of tools, but you actually had a caddy that you could hang on the wall. What you got in there was your Sudzo gun, you had your caddy, everything slotted on, and actually on the caddy there was all little pictures of what actually went on there. I'm actually missing one brush. Um, but this was a floor tool, so I'll just put the caddy down out of the way so you can actually see me. And it actually adjusted, literally by flicking this switch. Now, as you flip this switch, and I'll just quickly zoom in so you can actually see. As you flip this switch, you flipped it over and the brushes would raise. I don't know if you can actually pick that up on the camera. And that would give you a bit of agitation while vacuuming. Right, so you've still got the tool, exactly the same tools as what came with the Heritage 84 and the Heritage 1. And you had your handle, you'd get a little strap that you could hang over, and so it still had the connection to hang the strap on, which I thought was a quite good thing with that Kirby did. If you were vacuuming your stairs, you could actually hang it over your arm and vacuum your stairs with the hose. You still had the crevice tool, um, we've got our wall and ceiling brush here. Uh, this, you'll recognize, this still goes today. This is the pet groomer, a uh, really good tool. And then we've got the duster brush, which hasn't changed much. I think we've just gone to horse hair as opposed to whatever hair was used back then. Obviously it wasn't mine. <laughs> and then you've got your inflator. Now the inflator's changed a little bit, but with the Sudzo gun, you've just got the round nozzle that actually went on your Sudzo gun to blow your Sudzo. So this was quite a good, this was quite a good caddy. And as you know, if you've been watching my channel, this was probably one of the first Kirby's I ever, ever seen demonstrated. Um, I was well impressed when actually seeing it come out. This came out in 1987. So it's three years on from when the 1984 model came out um, and it actually got a caddy with it. Now the Heritage 2 ran from 1987 to 1989 and you could still get a shakeout bag. It was still optional if you wanted that shakeout bag. I don't know why you'd want one. Um, to me, it's probably a bit like the canister vacuums today, where you're emptying your own uh, rubbish in the bin out the shakeout bag. Now, you was advised with the shakeout bags to obviously clean them out after every use, so you didn't get that build-up dirt in there. And you could launder them over time, not every single week, but you'd launder them every couple of months just to stop any smell that was in there and get any dirt out. Um, I think people just didn't want to launder bags that had been vacuuming around the floor and get all that dirt actually into their washing machines. I mean, you could take it to local laundry, that's another way of getting away with it. But I don't think people wanted to actually do that. So that's why Kirby's tend to stick with the paper bags in the end, because it was more of a disposable item, and it was another item that they could actually sell and make money on, because it's another consumable that you can, you have to buy when you own a Kirby. So it was another money-making, not scheme, but it was a better, to me, it was a better system but it did cost you a little bit more. I think that's why some people still opted for the shake out bags. What changed on this was the mini emptier. The mini emptier didn't have the little flick switch on the bottom anymore, and it actually came like this, and it was see-through, so it was quite cool. You could actually see it sucking all the dirt up as you were vacuuming your carpets. So if prior to this you previously owned a different vacuum to a Kirby, you could actually see all the dirt being sucked up that your other vacuum had left behind, so it was quite cool. Also what we got as well was a power light. So I don't know if you can see that. I actually got a power light on there as well so you could see whether it was on or off, whether you got power there. The light and everything stayed the same. The brush roll was still adjusted by the screws. So I'll quickly show you those. So to adjust these, it was literally two screws and you'd actually move them up until that vacuumed an eighth of an inch. Now this still used the old style belts, which were a lot thicker. Now today, you can get away with using the newer style belts. Sorry, I've got hiccups. <laughs> this, as I say, to me, was probably one of the best curbs I'd, I'd ever seen. Well, it was the only curb I'd seen back in 1987. Um, and this is what my mum bought 
uh, well my dad bought for my mum and I was well impressed. I used it more than my mum. I, I really enjoyed using it. I really enjoyed vacuuming the city, watching the dirt go up, vacuuming the stairs, watching the dirt go up. Um, it was really cool. Um, using the shampoo system and the sprayer on it was absolutely awesome back then. So the Heritage 2 only had a lifespan of two years um, and then Kirby changed it again. But they still kept this system. They still kept this system actually worked into the early 90s and they progressed on again and they actually changed the tools and I will quickly show you what those are. But I'll bring up the next model, which is the Legend 2. All right, so the Legend 2 came with a caddy. Now this is a late Legend 2. This is a 1991. So this is one of the last Legend 2s and it actually came with a caddy you might recognize. So it came with the same caddy as what was coming with the G3. So what Kirby did was they actually kept, done away with this part, but they still kept this section here. So this was your old section there, the slot on there, and you could spin it around and go low down. But then what we got was an end on there that was adjustable up and down. But they still kept this section here, which you put on there, and then you could spin that left and right, and actually go up or down and get it under the surfaces. Now what that actually changed as well was there was no adjustment on. So there was no adjustment on the brush roll where you got adjustment here. This one was preset, that was it. There was no adjustment on there. But you could get the little rollers to roll on the floor so you wouldn't scratch your floor. Um, so that was quite a good addition. I mean, th these have never been used. Uh, I, I, I fell quite lucky with this. I will put an eye card above of when I actually picked this up if you haven't seen that video. But um, these were quite good tools, and um, you've got all that distance there. So unlike your traditional vacuums at the time, we had the little two-inch gap. You've still got all that suction there that actually located on the floor, so you'd be sucking all that as opposed to a little two-inch gap just here. It sucked all the way across. Um, so that was a quite a good tool. And Kirby also kept the original Sunzo gun, um, but they, I think they were in the process of bringing out the G3. So they did carry the caddy on from what they were going to use with the G3 and they brought to change the tools as well with the Legend 2. And another tool that changed was the wall and ceiling brush. Not by much, it just became a bit squarer and less rounded. Um, it had a lot more area for suction. So where you can literally got like fingers thickness there, it actually doubled in size with the opening. So you could have a lot more suction on your wall and ceilings um, and it just made a massive difference. Now this was carried on through this design through to the G3. I'm not too sure if the edge of le early Legend 2s had the older tools, but I'm pretty sure that as 1991 came, Kirby were messing around with the tools and getting it ready for the G3. And that's why these sort of ones were coming out at the time with the later Legend 2. Now there was a shortage of Generation 3s in, on the market, so a lot of the Kirby distributors decided to stick with the Legend 2 and were still ordering Legend 2s up until the G3 was actually released. So across the board there was a lot more older Legend 2s being sold than there was G3s because of the shortage. Right, so the only other tool that really changed, and it just got a bit longer and a bit more, I think a, a bit more well made, was the actual inflator. Um, this is a bit more, I'd say breakable plastic. Uh, whereas this is a bit more molded and a bit more rounded. So this was what they actually changed. So you can actually see it's about half inch longer in that respect and about half inch longer on the end. Um, but that, that's all the only way this changed. Now this is still the same design going with the Avalair 2 today. Kirby tend to do little tweaks on the tools as they go through making life easier. And in my opinion, the, the Kirby vacuum system is still the best system in the world. It just makes life so much easier. Now, I have used Dyson's when we first moved to Australia. I, moved, I used uh, my friend's Dyson in the end. We got our Kirby out because I couldn't cope with it. It didn't work. It didn't suck up the mat. It didn't get the dog hair off the floor. And it was just a big bulbous thing to push around compared to the Kirby, especially with the tech drive um, with my G4. It was just a major difference. So if we go back to the old heritage, you had one pole and you had one curve pole and that was it. And then obviously attachments would go on the floor. So that there would attach like so. And that was what you had to vacuum with, which was quite a monstrosity. I mean, you got one, two, three, 
four items just to vacuum the floor. So what Kirby did to make things 10 times easier, they actually changed the tools to your two poles and they made a system where you pushed it in, twist and it locked and you'll recognise these because these are all the G-Series tools that were brought into the Legend 2 while the G3 was being developed but then you still had one, two, three, four, you had five items <laughs> to vacuum the floor. So we'd literally gone from four items to five items. So <laughs> it was getting a bit of a joke <laughs> in that respect. Because if you wanted to vacuum the floor, you got five items and that wasn't including your hose. Um, but you had got the adjustment at hand here to reduce the suction and you could flip that on the other end as well um, to do your wall and ceilings. So life was progressing. Obviously you'd still got the original handle and things like that. Um, the mini emptiers stayed the same and you could still opt for a shakeout bag up until 1991. I mean, how mad's that? We'd got the uh, paper bags actually in there, the Micro Magic bags, so they were working really well. Kirby were, were looking to still make money on consumables, so they did do away with the shakeout bag then and then all you could buy was a Kirby with the bag. Obviously the shakeout bags weren't selling so much, people were opting for the bags because they didn't want to be emptying their own rubbish like you have to do these days. If you've got a Dyson or anything like that, you've still got to empty your own rubbish. So we've sort of gone backwards with the new vacuums. Yes, they've got help with filtration, but you've still got to empty your own rubbish. Now, I, I don't want to empty my own rubbish. I'd rather have a bag where I can just throw it away. Rubbish is gone and put a fresh bag on there. Now, everything else stayed the same. Um, the, the, this is probably one of the best Kirby's they ever released from what I've been told, um, the suction on it is absolutely amazing. Now I find this a lot easier to push around than that Heritage 84. How people ever push that around is beyond me. I, I'm quite fit, but you need to be honest, fortunately, to push that, that around because the suction on it, once it sucks that floor, it's really, really tough to actually push. So we've still got a power light. Um, the bag system stayed the same until the G3 was about to be released. Now, I have got a video up that will be coming up soon showing you certain things that Kirby had back in 1984 that they introduced into the, the Generation 3 and you'd be quite surprised what it actually was that they actually had back in 1984 um, that they implemented on the G3 and I thought it was a really good system that they could have used way, way, way back then. I'm not going to say what it is, so make sure you check out my next video after this and to see that. Now in the links and the descriptions, I'll always put links in the descriptions to any of the Kirby products that you need to buy. Um, so make sure you check those out. If you need any Kirby products, always check in the links in the descriptions. They're always below my videos. So this was just a bit of a video just to quickly show you the differences between the, the early Kirby's I've got and how Kirby had changed over time. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this history video and I'll catch you in a bit. Right, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that was really informative. Just a bit of history, literally from back of 1979 straight through to 1991. Just covering the heritage and the legend and how uh, tools and the Kirby had actually changed for the better going through those eras. Right, so we're literally 85 subscribers away from that next question. So if we get there for the weekend, that'd be a fantastic achievement to actually get that next question up for the weekend to get five more people into the draw to enter to win that Kirby G6 and then we'll push on to 1,000 subscribers to actually get that Kirby given away once we've got another five people in the draw add 1,000 subscribers and then we'll run the draw and see who actually wins it and get it shipped out the door. In those of you new to the channel, if you're getting value out of this content then contemplate slapping that subscribe button, ding that bell for notifications, give us a big thumbs up and comment down below. I will reply to the comment and if you like what you comment I'll pin it to the video. So what we'll do is we'll cut to the bloopers and I'll catch you in the next one. So before I start, we literally... Um, so... Kirby tend to do a little tree, a little... Kirby tend to do... Turby, Kirby... Um, um, so the tradition... tradition that, um, now today you can get away, away. Now today you can get away with using the newer style belt style. Early nineties, hell from Saturday, hell that.